So moving on to inflation. Now, before I get really into the calculations of inflation, which is what we're really focused on uh, doing here, is calculating the future value of an item based on an average inflation rate, I really want to highlight the fact that inflation is a really complex thing. And while making calculations based on average inflation rate does serve a purpose and is valid in the right circumstances, there are a whole bunch of assumptions that we're gonna be making in the process. The biggest of which is that the inflation rate is going to average that over that period of time. Now, you know, like I said, there are valid reasons to do this and it can be perfectly valid in the right circumstances to index values, which is what we call, you know, pricing something for the future um, based on average inflation rate. But there's so many things that infect inf uh, affect inflation and inflation rates can spike unexpectedly. They can change unexpectedly, even to, due to projections and things like that. There's a lot of people's jobs that are you know, about trying to ensure that we keep some level of control over inflation, but it's a really complex thing. So that's something I really wanna highlight here. Whilst we are you know, performing relatively simple calculations based on an average inflation rate, there are a whole bunch of assumptions in this really complex issue. So first of all, what is inflation? Essentially inflation is that um, situation where the price of something over the period of time increases. So I think back to, you know, my dad, because I've just bought a house recently, um, my dad talked about when he first purchased his first house, he managed to build it completely from start to finish for $10,000. Now, I've built a very similar house and that's cost me over $400,000. Um, so you think about that, like that price over that given a time for the same thing has increased by a lot. And that is due to inflation. And the price of everything increases over time due to inflation. So that's goods and services. So we talk about services, you know, you might hire someone to paint your house. That's going to, you know, the price of doing that is probably gonna increase due to inflation over time. So that's what inflation is. It's the price of goods and services that increase over time and they increase for a whole range of really complex um, reasons. So let's look at essentially a way that we can calculate inflation if we're looking at inf average inflation rates. Keep in mind that this is carrying a whole heap of assumptions with it. Essentially, we can make this neat little formula that's built from the compound interest formula. You might notice a lot of similarities to it. So we've got index value here. Index value is the price of something in the future. How much we're going to say it's going to cost in the future if the inflation rate averages this over that period of time. So the present value, we've got to take into account what it currently is worth and we multiply that by one plus the inflation rate so the percentage keep in mind we need to represent this as a decimal because it's a formula so one plus the inflation rate um, per year and we need to put that to the power of uh, the amount of years that we're going to be um, calculating the inflation for so in our example here uh, let's look at Amy is saving for a holiday to Europe and has estimated the current costs of her chip uh, trip currently is $15,000. So she's saving up for it and she knows that currently the inflation rate averages about 2.2% per year. So if this continues, um, we wanna calculate what the cost of the planned trip is going to be if it's calculated for inflation for three years. So essentially what we're gonna do here is uh, we're gonna grab this um, index value. We're gonna calculate the index value, I should say. So indexed uh, value. It's gonna equal the present value. So the present value of the trip is 15,000. And that's gonna be multiplied with one plus the inflation rate as a decimal. So that's gonna be 0 0.022 to the power of how many years that we're indexing it for. Now, obviously the higher this number is, so the higher the number of years is, the more we're assuming that the average um, inflation rate is going to continue at that for that period of time. So it may become less reliable. It may not as well, but uh, yeah, that's just something to note. So then we essentially just chuck it into our calculator. So the index value, it's going to be 15,000 
multiplied by 1 plus 0.022 to the power of 3. So it's going to be approximately $16,011.91. Now you might ask at this point, why would we bother um, indexing something for inflation? You know, why, why might we bother kept making this calculation? Well, if you think about it, Amy needs $15,000 today to go to Europe. But Amy has to save up for that. And it's going to take time for Amy to save up for it. In this case, it's going to take three years. So Amy's going to consider how much is that trip going to cost in three years' time, not just today, because that's when she's going to need the money. So in three years' time, that cost is going to be $16,000. Now, if Amy has only set her target to be 15000 Amy's not going to have enough money to go to Europe in three years' time. So that's the reason why it's really important to calculate and index things for inflation because it's going to, you know, affect what the target that you're going to need to have when you're thinking about saving up for something in particular. So let's have a look at another example of this. So Georgia would like to purchase a painting that's currently worth $5,000. She makes monthly deposits into an investment account so that she can purchase the painting in three years time. If inflation averages 2.5% per year, calculate the value of painting indexed for inflation for three years. So indexed value in three years is gonna be the present value, which is 5,000. 1 plus the inflation rate, so 0.025 to the power of 3. We'll quickly whack this into our calculator. So indexed value equals oops, when I actually put it into the calculator correctly. There we go. So it's approximately $5,384.45. So you can see here we can quickly calculate how much that painting is going to be in three years' time. So if you're setting up, um, I guess, a target, your target should be $5,384.45 approximately. And that's where this question now leads to. So the investment account... Um, pays 3.5% interest compounded monthly. How much will Georgia need to deposit into the account at the end of each month? So assuming that Georgia's starting at zero, how much is she going to need to put into the account? So this is where we now start with N. So N is going to be our five years, no, three years, sorry. So three years, and the account is compounding monthly, so it's three by 12. The interest rate is 3.5%. The present value, oops, PV, uh, is zero. The PMT is what we're calculating. She's making regular deposits. The future value we have just calculated to be approximately, and this has to be a positive because you're taking the money out of the bank at the end of this time. So it's going to be $5,384.45. Oops, 45. Let me just quickly erase that. Uh, where are we up to? So payments per year. So did we say how much? Uh, yeah, so it was each month. So it's 12. And the compounds per year, it was also compounding 12 times per year. So that's what we put in here. So we can now see what essentially has happened here is we've grabbed the index value. So rather than just saving for $5,000, because that's what it is worth right now, we're looking at how much was it worth in the future, and we've set that as our target instead. That's essentially what's changed here. And it now allows us to get our PMT, which is going to be a negative because this is a depositing value. So let me quickly pop this all into the calculator so we can get a value here. So 3 by 12... Uh, three and a half percent, uh, five, three, eight, four point five, and twelves. And we get a PMT that's approximately equal to one forty two and seven cents. So, therefore, because it's a negative, write that little sentence just um, interpreting it. So, Georgia will 
need to make monthly deposits of a prox one forty two and seven cents. Uh, I should really look. Uh, we probably should round that up when I think about it to eight cents, just for that reasoning of um, Georgia might not make the exact amount. I mean, it'll only be a few cents off um, if you round that down. So we'll just quickly round that up. So that way we're ensuring Georgia does reach, um, you know, the index value of the painting. So essentially here. You might get asked things like what assumptions have been made, what hasn't been accounted for. So these are things that are really, really important to consider. We're assuming, and I've talked about this before, that the inflation rate is going to remain the same. That's a big assumption. Um, inflation rate can change very quickly. Um, whilst there's a lot of people, our governments are trying to ensure the inflation rate stays as constant as it can be, um, it is, you know, it will fluctuate at times. So that's something that's a big assumption here. And inflation changes for so many different reasons. It's a really complex issue. Um, but what hasn't been accounted for? If you think back to our previous video, tax. Okay, we've just uh, looked at, you know, we're making deposits into an account that's earning us interest. Interest is a form of income. Georgia, we don't know what how much she's earning. She might need to pay tax on this income. Okay, and that might mean that how much she needs to save for needs to be even higher. Okay, so that's something that hasn't been accounted for as well.